the formidable robot. So do any of you remember those Mickey Mouse cartoons from the 1930s? The ones that were just put on DVD a few years ago? Well, I hear there's one that wasn't released to even the most avid classic Disney fans. According to sources, it's nothing special, just a continuous loop, like the Flintstones, of Mickey walking past six buildings that goes on for two or three minutes before fading out. Unlike the cutesy tunes usually put in though, the song in this cartoon was not a song at all, just constant banging on a piano for a minute and a half before switching to white noise for the remainder of the film. It wasn't the jolly old mouse we've come to love either. Mickey wasn't dancing or smiling. He was just kind of walking like you or me with a normal slightly dismal facial expression and his head tilted to the side. Up until a year or two ago, everyone believed that after the film cut to black, that was it. When Leonard Maltin was reviewing the cartoon to decide whether it belonged in the complete series, he decided it was too junk to be on the DVD, but wanted to have a digital copy due to the fact that it was an original creation of Walt. Once he'd created a digitized version on his computer and looked at the file, he noticed something. The cartoon was actually 9 minutes and 4 seconds long. This is what my source emailed to me, in full. He is a personal assistant of one of the higher executives at Disney, and an acquaintance of Mr. Maltin himself. After it cut to black, it stayed like that until the sixth minute, before going back to Mickey walking. The sound was different this time. It was a murmur. It wasn't even language, more like a gurgled cry. As the noise got louder and more indistinguishable over the next minute, the picture began to get weird. The sidewalk started twisting in directions that seemed impossible based on the physics of Mickey's walking. And the dismal face of the mouse was slowly curling into a smirk. In the seventh minute, the murmur turned into a blood-curdling scream, the kind painful to hear. The picture was getting more obscure too. Colors were appearing that shouldn't have been possible at the time. Mickey's face began to fall apart. His eyes rolled onto the bottom of his chin like two marbles in a fishbowl. He now had a curled smile pointing upward towards the left side of his face. The buildings became rubble, floating in midair. Meanwhile, the sidewalk was still navigating in warped directions, a few seeming inconceivable to what we, as humans, know about direction. Mr. Maltin became disturbed and left the room at this point, sending an employee to finish the video and note down everything that happened, up until the last second. Afterwards, he was to immediately store the cartoon's disc in the vault. The distorted screaming in the film lasted until 8 minutes and a few seconds in, before abruptly cutting to the Mickey Mouse face seen at the credits of every Disney video from that time, with what sounded like a broken music box playing in the background. This continued for about 30 seconds. Whatever was in those remaining 30 seconds I haven't been able to get a sliver of information about. From a security guard working under me who was making the rounds outside of that room, I was told that, after the last frame, the employee stumbled out of the room with pale skin, stating that, real suffering is not known, seven times before speedily taking the guard's pistol and offing himself on the spot. The only other thing I could get out of Leonard Maltin was that the last frame of the film was a piece of Russian text that said something along the lines of, the sights of hell bring its viewers back in. As far as I know, no one else has seen it, but there have been dozens of attempts at getting the file on rapid share by employees inside the studios, all of whom have been promptly terminated from their jobs. Whether it got online or not is up for debate, but if rumors serve me right, it is out there somewhere under, suicidemouse.avi. If you ever find a copy of the film, don't view it. Contact me by phone immediately, regardless of the time. When a Disney death is covered up as well as this, it means this has to be something huge. Get back at me. TR. I've yet to find a copy, but it is out there. I know it. <laughs>